Let's learn everything we need to know about GitHub as if we are a complete beginner as fast as possible. Welcome back, y'all. I'm going to show you everything we need to know about GitHub when it comes to software development, web app development, why we even use GitHub. And the reason I'm creating this video actually is because I've realized I've done a ton of content when it comes to how to approach coding if you have no experience using artificial intelligence. And I just got to go over GitHub, right? This is like one of the most fundamental things for software development to understand. So let me just break it down as easy as possible. Everything you should really know about this platform. First major thing. What's amazing is that basically for most of what you want to do, you won't have to pay a single dime. This is completely free. Simply just sign up. I'll leave a link in the description down below. So then your second question might be is when would I pay for this? That's when you transition from a solo to a small team to much more of a GitHub organization. And even then when managing and running teams, you're looking at $4 a month for a seat. Regardless though, let's just see what this is about. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna click my name, I'm gonna say your profile. So this page right here is kind of like the collection of everything that's going on. First thing I want you to understand, repositories. What is a repository? This is where we store our code in the cloud. If you've created something with WinSurf, Cursor, VS Code, like you know where that code is at within that, what we call IDE, integrated development environment. Like when you're playing around with the code on here, that's on your machine, that's local. We like to use things like GitHub so we can put this in the cloud. Putting it in the cloud has a ton of different advantages, which we'll jump into the first thing you just need to understand as a baseline is a repository is where we store our code second thing that you may be looking at is 25 contributions anytime there is a green little dot here for a day that just means when you actually push something to a repo publicly and then obviously that's just your profile so let's actually look at a repository here we're going to create a new one just to kind of walk through it a little bit. So the idea is this, we have our owner, that's gonna be you as a individual, and then you repo name. This could be public facing if it is a public repository. So I can just put test here. Next is gonna be whether or not it's public or private. So public means anyone on the internet could find this repository, find the code in it and take it or use it or download it. Private is very clear in the sense of once you make it private, only you as an account owner has access to this code. Now, when it comes to setting this all up, connecting GitHub here to VS Code here, I'm gonna leave a video down below that shows you how to do with Cursor AI. Very simple, connect both GitHub and your IDE so you can start doing pushes and commits with branches. What I wanna go over in this video though is what to understand fundamentally about your repo in general. So I have a repo here that I created in a two hour and 30 minute series when it came to creating a backend. So let's walk through this user interface a little bit so it doesn't look so crazy. So the first major thing that you need to understand when looking at this is what we call branches. So right now there is only one branch, main. Here's what that means. We have a line here and this is main. Main is how the code exists right now. So all these files, source, Python functions, that's how the code exists now. What we do when we create a branch is we're taking this exact code of how it sits now and we're creating a duplication of the code. So we'll come over here, exact same code. We're naming it. So we'll just say new footer. We'll just say new, but new F for new footer. Footer like the footer of the website. New footer has the exact same code as main branch, exact same. But the reason we're creating this branch is so that when we start making changes to the code file, e.g. we come over here, we go to our source, Let's just say we go to app.js and we change something here. That won't affect the original main branch. When I make a change in new F, new footer, that doesn't change the main branch code. This is a whole separate branch now that's built off the main branch. So what this allows us to do is that when I'm in new F, the branch, and I make a change in the code, I keep going, I keep going, I keep going. I like it. At any point, if I mess up, so I keep going down that path. I'm adding in, I'm adding code. I'm changing files. If at any point I mess up and I completely break the application or I'm just like, what's going on? What I can do is simply delete this branch. If I chose to go this extreme, delete this branch and I'm back at main. Main hasn't been touched. Main's all good. Main's where I left it. That's one of the reasons why we do branches so that we don't mess with the main branch. And the reason the main branch is so fundamental, this is supposed to be the code that's not broken. It functionally works throughout. Now, yes, obviously when you're just starting, it's gonna be like, okay, well the code doesn't work anyways because I just started. Well, that's fine. But the idea is that the main branch is never really supposed to update unless it's absolutely clear that the new code that it's updating with is good to go. So what does that mean in this context is let's assume that I kept going down this little path of new F, new footer. Then what we can do here 
and we're assuming the code is actually good, like everything looks good, we like it, we do something called merge. And that's where we merge back to main. And then we'll delete new F because it's no longer needed as all the code changes that were here has now been merged back to main. So now main's updated with all the code there. So we delete new F. So now we have a new version of main. So your next question might be is Corbin, how do I merge? This is what we call a pull request. So we can check out some closed ones here. When you have a new branch, so for example here, we created auth done. This is when we added authentication to this repo. You can click it. What this was is notice, a commit from main, that main branch from the auth branch. And what we do here, and notice how it says merge as well, there were files changed. These files changed are what's different from the original code in the main to now auth. So for example, if I went to my source app.js, the green means it was added, the red means it was removed. In the auth branch, we added these two lines, which means in the main branch at this point before merging it, they don't exist. Therefore, once we merge though, from auth to main, now they exist. This workflow is called PR request. It's not absolutely necessary. If you're really a true beginner and you're just learning and just wanting to go, you don't have to do new branches, new PRs and all this craziness. You could just keep committing to main. There's no reason you can't. It's just not a good practice long-term. I also want to make clear that in that video I referenced at the beginning of this one, I go over showing you how to do all this in terminal and actually doing the commands and teaching you step-by-step -step here. This video, I want to make very high level so you can kind of understand what the heck is the point of a PR and all these different things that you see like right off the bat. Therefore, let me show you an effective way that you can actually download public repos so you can start playing around and you can even download this one right here. The way we're gonna do this, because this doesn't require an SSH key or any type of access token as I go over in other videos, is all we need to do is simply is copy this HTTPS. You're gonna come over to your IDE, like VS Code, Cursor AI, and what you wanna do is just simply create a folder anywhere. So in theory, you could just create a folder in your documents. When I say folder, I literally mean folder. Like you know when you right click and then just hit new folder, new folder. Once you create your folder, you're gonna do file, open folder. So I created a simple folder here called backend app. This could have been called anything. You could have called it apples and cheese. Now I'm gonna come down here to the little warning sign and go to terminal. What I'll do here, since this is a public repo and this is the advantages of GitHub. First off, let's make sure you install GitHub, which will be brew install git. Now if you're like Corbin, I don't even have brew. I, the NPM command's not working, all that. Check out that 30 minute video below. I'll show you how to do all that and make sure you have Node.js installed so you can do these kind of commands. So once you do have git installed though, all we need to do to get a public repo is very simple. We do git clone copy the HTTPS, paste this URL, hit enter. And I wanna show you this, as this is gonna allow you to get really cool repos that are just publicly available. And you can kind of dive through the code yourself, like what's going on here? This is interesting. And you can kind of click through, see what's up and keep going. So you can come over here to unauth, go to homepage.js and be like, whoa, what's happening here? And kind of scroll through. That's the baseline. Yes, there is a ton of other stuff going on here, but you clicked on this video as a beginner's guide. Therefore, a lot of this other stuff, you'll slowly just start understanding more and more as you get going. But I gave you the fundamental tools and ways of approaching GitHub that as you get going and as you keep working in this kind of work environment, everything else is becoming a lot more clear. Like, for example, you don't need to know what projects is right now. You don't need to know what insights mean. You don't really need to know most of what settings have here. What you do need to know is the fundamental idea of building software when it comes to creating branches merging the branch, how to commit, how to pull local code to your computer. This is just fundamental. Let's just learn how to ride the bike before we jump on the motorcycle. So here's what I'm gonna do so you can get a full comprehensive idea of how to approach this. I'm gonna leave my entire two hour and 30 minute backend series that shows you how to build out real backends for applications in the description down below. And then before you jump into that, I would encourage you to check out my three hour and 11 minute video that goes over how to build out front ends. It's gonna be a little bit more simple and allow you to grasp these ideas a lot easier when building out a front end. Backends are obviously a lot more complex. So this is a nice little pairing here where you'd start the front end, then the back end, and then by the end, you'd have a very good comprehension of how to approach GitHub in the context of web app development, software development, any type of development. And just for reference, in that three hour video, this is what we create. We created an entire front end that's actually live, webcafeai.com, check it out. This is all built with raw code. This doesn't cost me any money. 
any month because of the fact that we actually built it out and we're not using something like Webflow, that's why it costs me no money. I'm hosting it all. We're all good to go. So that covers understanding how to use GitHub on a service level. I plan on doing another video here that dives more into branch commits and understanding why we do a branch commit and all the implications of how to do a PR, how to delete a branch, how to even merge. A lot of this stuff, to be honest with you, is found in my longer videos, but I'll make a short, concise, nice little video. I'll see you in the next video. GitHub. Two random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.